This is GabNet, the great American broadcast network. Talk like you've never heard it before. Let's all sing. Hey, hey, hello, everybody. This is Alex Bennett. I'm not going to show you myself yet because we're going to do a little interview here that's uh, pre recorded. And then we'll see in about uh, 25 minutes with our citizens panel. But right now, I think it's time to go listen to an old friend that we like to call every couple of weeks and uh, uh, see how he's doing. Ladies and gentlemen, he may be sick, he may be ill, but he's the showman that he is, and so the show <laughs> must go on, right? Yeah. Who who came up with that phrase, the show must go on? Uh, I have no idea. This is Larry Bubbles Brown, ladies and gentlemen, and I'm sure he's not yeah, the guy yeah. that came up with it. Uh, no, I think it was, probably, it was probably the guy that owned the theater that didn't want to refund it, money. Yeah, right? the show must go on. Yeah. Do you know I've always lived by that? And you now, have, yeah. And now that you asked the question, I kind of think maybe I was stupid. <laughs> <laughs> you know? Think about it. You know? I was, uh, I was an idiot. Uh, I would go to work. It deathly ill. You, I think you may remember me doing some shows where I wasn't you very. You did, yeah, yeah, because the show must go on, and I figure, hey, it's only three hours, or what was it, four hours, four hours, four. Yeah. It's only four hours, and then I can get back into bed again, right? When I would go in, I think in all the years that I was on in San Francisco, I think I only missed about four days. I don't remember you ever missing a day. I think once I was so bad I couldn't get out of bed. I mean, it was, you know, I had like this deadly flu and it just had me to a point where if I tried to get out of bed, I would stumble and fall and it was terrible, you know, so that was that. I was at a club last year and they had 10 people showed up and they canceled the show. And I remember you said if one person came, you would do a show and... Yeah, I think I think you're right. Somebody made the effort to come out and uh, give yeah, it a they show. went all that way to see a show. They deserve to get one. And yeah. by the way, might I add the best one they've ever seen? Okay, uh huh. You know, very uh, personal. Yeah, you know, I, I'm 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 uh, really into that, and always have been. That the, the that if only one person bought a ticket, that one person should be entertained. Yeah. So. So but this was a club owner that canceled it because there weren't enough people there. Yeah, and it was like they had they had ten or twelve people. I mean, I was I would have gone up. I and they know. had they had the waitresses there, and they had the comics. Yeah, everybody they hired. there. They had everybody they hired. What did they do? Not pay the people that they hired? They just sent them home early, so they probably got paid for showing up for an hour. Yeah. So you're worried that you have this uh, this uh, thing that's been going around. Yeah, I don't think it's the flu, but. Uh, there's bad colds, and I heard the flu this year is dead deadly. Yeah. Uh, I have, so far, I've missed it. My wife got really sick. She had, a, like, a bronchial infection, and uh, um, it was not good. She was quite quite ill and for about three weeks, and I didn't get it. Wow. You know, so uh, maybe somewhere along the line I got a little bit of this flu or something, and then I, you know... Whatever I had, I had the flu shot this year, but they say that doesn't help you. They say that doing it good. Yeah, every year they say, "Oh well, I'm sorry, the flu shot doesn't work for this strain of the flu because we weren't expecting it." Well, then I know. Do your fucking job, will you? I know it's ridiculous. To begin with, do you know how we stop all and, and all flus during flu season? Just wipe them out completely. Mm. It, is destroy every fucking animal in Asia. <laughs> wow. Really, that's what causes it. It comes from Asia. It 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 it, it comes from a, the Asian continent. It comes from farms and pigs and whatever, and that's where it, that's where it starts. So, why you know, is that? I don't know. It's just the nature of why flus are the way they are and how they travel around the world. Did I just hear you cough? 
Yes, I got that. I hope I had bronchitis last year. I hope I'm not getting that again. Normally, when we sit down and do these things, we do like uh, two of them. And I said to him, "I think we better just do one." You. So you had. So sweetie had the bronchial thing. That's, yeah, that, I, that's horrible. I know. I didn't get it. I didn't get How anything. They, they treat that with anything? Uh, yeah, antibiotics. And okay. also, uh, a guy in her office uh, got pneumonia out of this thing. Uh, I, I had a friend who, who was 77, or was 97, rather. Excuse me, take it back, 87. See, I'm falling apart myself. 87, and he, he got pneumonia, and they put him in the hospital. Because, you know, when you're 87 and you get oh, anything deadly. like it, they just, they just put you in a hospital and say, you know, we're not taking any chances with you. So there were, I've, I've known a lot of people really sick. And... Um, so far, I've avoided it. Knock on whatever this you, laminate yeah, you is. You sound very healthy. Well, I, 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 I'm sniffling a little bit today, but that's because I have sinus problems and, and the weather. And it's, I, you know, so whatever. So outside of that, you've you've been feeling great, right? Oh, just yeah, just a wonderful year. I think, yeah. <laughs> Always starts off horrible. Yeah, yeah. Little cat that I was feeding next door died, so that's very depressed about that. Well, you shouldn't choke it. Uh, <laughs> you know, so you, you there was a little cat you f- were feeding. That I, was, he was a while. Yeah, I've been feeding him for two years. And uh, why had you been feeding him if he lived next door? Well, he stays next door. He'd come out. Uh, he's a feral cat, but he's not anybody's pet. Yeah. Uh, and, but and I got real super depressed over him dying. Oh, jeez! What did he die of? I don't know. He he started. He might have had the upper respiratory thing. He was sneezing a little last time I fed him, and then he stopped eating two weeks ago. He wouldn't come around anymore. And then I saw his dead body in the yard next door. No, I great. Tried, oh, I tried true. to get him. Uh, <laughs> I was true. trying to get him to the vet, but the uh, fucking neighbor next door wouldn't let me in his backyard to get him, so I want to kill that motherfucker. For a guy who is terminally depressed, for that to yeah. happen to you. Yeah. Yeah. I just want to... I, do, I wish I were dead now. I'm so depressed about this. About the cat? Yeah. Well... We do when we bond with an animal that is probably the closest friend we have. Uh, yeah, uh, they're even you know they're even better than than women, wives, yeah, sure. whatever. Because there's a there's a certain kind of loyalty there, and it's uh, it's it's with a cat it's a little different than with a dog. With a dog it's stupid loyalty. You know you can beat me, you can hurt me, but I don't care. You're my master, and I love yeah. you. Right. But uh, cats are like, feed me, feed me, feed me. Oh, I love you. Feed me, feed me. I love you. Oh, you just fed me. Fuck you. Now, that's what I like about cats. Yeah, they're independent. Yeah. You have to earn their respect, you know? Uh-huh. But, I mean, I've had some Siamese cats. I used to love Siamese because oh, they, they, were, yeah. they were very loving. They very were very smart. loyal. They were like dogs in that respect. Uh-huh. You know? And, um, uh, but... Uh, you get attached to an animal, and when the animal goes, your 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 depression. I mean, I had I had one cat die in San Francisco. I brought from the East Coast. Had been with me for eighteen years, and when wow. he went, I knew that I you know it had I had had a, a wonderful life with the cat, and that he was eighteen, and it was probably his time to go. But still, that doesn't mean you don't feel bad about it, especially because you've had him that long, and he's been that close to you. Yeah, the worst. Yeah. Um, uh, in fact, you know what I often said about my cat, the, this particular cat? I said, I had him for 18 years, and I can't believe he never talked to me. <laughs> because he did, on a rather continual basis, even though it wasn't verbiage. Uh, and uh, so, you know, you lose animals, and you feel, that makes you feel pretty damn bad, you know? And uh, so I, I feel sorry for you, even though it wasn't your cat. No. Well, you go on Facebook every day. There's everyone's lost a pet. So it's just I don't know why I wouldn't don't think I'd ever have one because I can't, I can't go through that. It's just this is horrible. Well, at my age, I don't want a pet because it'll probably outlast me, and I don't want something sitting in this house looking <laughs> at me waiting for me to die. You know, 
uh, every other pet I, you know, if I knew that I was, you know, in my 40s and then if I got a pet tomorrow I'd prob- and had him for 18 years, I'd be taking care of him for 18 years. But I can't guarantee that now. And, uh, you know, somewhere along the line, like we've fallen in love with a cat recently because my friend Jack, the one who's in the hospital, they have a cat and her name is Berta. And we took a cat sat for this animal and we didn't even want to give it back when we were through because she was so smart and so special, you know, that, Uh um, uh, you know, that we really we really became very attached to this animal. I, I said to my wife, I said, we really shouldn't, you know, her people are coming back <laughs> and they're going to want their cat back. You know, but uh, so we are now the unofficial uh, godparents of the cat. So anytime they go away, we take care of it. And they like you? Uh, the, uh, they like us, the people? The cat. Oh, the cat. The cat, uh, in the beginning does as cats do, you know, hides under things and behind things. And when she finally came out, uh, she became very close to us, Yeah, you know. Uh, and then when her people came back, I wondered what would happen, you know, would she recognize them or whatever? And they walk in the door, and normally that cat would have gone and run under something to hide because, oh, people are coming in. She just looked to see who it was and went, oh, it's them. Okay. <laughs> And then she spent the rest of the hour with the people, sh- taking them around the house, showing them the house, <laughs> the apartment. Uh, you know, here's the room with you, this, and I'm over here, and this is a little play thing I have here, and, you know. And then she went home, and she didn't want to get back in the thing because th- she went back to a two-bedroom apartment, and this thing is like summer camp for that cat. You know, it's, it's like the great outdoors because there's a lot, tons of room here. You know, you got like a house. Yeah, well, I do. We do have basically these apartments were built as houses and they were just on top of each other. In fact, they were bigger than they are because I have a place here where you could break into it and it's a doorway and it goes on to another. Oh, I don't know, something like 12 rooms or something. Jesus. Yeah, these were this was built by uh, this building was built by the Astors. Uh, and uh, in uh, the in the year 1900, so uh, it's got old bones. It really does, and it's an amazing building. But uh, I wish the landlord took better care of it. I think he doesn't have the same love for it that we do. He takes apartments and ruins them by tearing them apart. And you know, you could take this apartment if you wanted to. And we have a foyer. And what they do is they make the foyer an entrance to two other apartments. And then they yeah. cut up the apartment into two other apartments. And you go, so wow. It screws it up. Maybe, maybe it's a landmark. They shouldn't be able to do that. Well, you know, we're in, in contention with this apartment fighting. We spent like $40,000 in, in lawyer's fees already. Uh, and I think part of what we're doing is trying to protect the apartment, you know, uh, because they always keep coming back saying, oh, you know, well, if we get it, we'll be happy to to uh, refurbish the apartment. And we said, no, we don't want refurbishing. You want to renovate, uh, rather renovation. And I say, no, we don't want renovation. We would like um, uh, restoration. And that's different. Because I, we don't want a, a hair touched on the head of this apartment. We just love it too much. And also, there's another point. Let's say at some point this uh, uh, landlord decides, okay, well, we're going to let it go condo or we're going to let people buy their apartments. Well, if they lowered the ceilings and pulled out all the wood in the apartment and things like that like they normally do when they refurbish it, uh, I, I it would take the complete value out of the apartment. Yeah. You know, so I'm fighting for the value of the apartment if the day should ever come where we're we're able to buy it. So, yeah. you know. I read some article about how in New York they can remodel an apartment and does something that makes the unit no longer subject to rent control. That's right. Though That's why they do it. Yeah. There's a, there's a thing called rent stabilization. <clears throat> and if you want to do away with rent stabilization, uh, uh in a particular apartment, when the person moves out, you completely refurbish it, you know, lower ceilings, do all kinds of things, pull out wood and everything. And then it becomes a non-rent stabilized apartment. 
So it, it's it's a whole game they play, and and quite frankly, I I think it's destructive to the history of New York. Uh, but uh, they do that, you know. They play all kinds of little games. But uh, rents they hate rent stabilization. What they hate worst of all is rent control. If mm-hmm. you were in an apartment in this building, uh, up to about. Oh, gee, I can't remember what year it was, something like in the 60s or something like that. You're rent-controlled. And what rent-control is, is that let's say you have an apartment, you're in it, it's rent-controlled, and now you die. You can will the lease to your closest of kin. Wow, that's huge. So there are people <laughs> living here under rent-control and paying maybe, I don't know, under $1,000 a month for a 23-room apartment. <laughs> <laughs> and they hate them. They're sitting around waiting for these people. They're like the Grim Reaper. They're sitting around waiting for these people to die or not do something right or be a miss a payment or, uh, you know, whatever it takes to, to, to get them out. So the rent controls, which there aren't a lot of them, but there are about maybe 15 of them in this building are still here. Then rent stabilization is a different thing altogether, but it, it says that if the rent is under a certain amount, I think it's $2,500, uh, it has to remain rent controlled. But if it goes over, it doesn't. But the reason it can't go over is because it's rent stabilized. So what happens is when somebody moves out and they do the renovations, then they can charge over the $2,500 a month for rent and say it's no longer rent stabilized. So the so, apartment like ours right now, they they're dying to get in here because this apartment, with the view that it has, which is the best view of almost any apartment in the building, there may be three apartments on our floor that have this view, and the size and all of that, they could get $7,000 a month for this. Yeah, Jesus. <laughs> you know, and... Uh, I mean, but they're never going to get it, though, because we're... Yeah, don't they, let them renovate. No, we're in court against them them and, and the guy who ostensibly leased us the apartment. Uh, and, uh, you know, we're, we're fighting the whole, the whole thing. So, um, uh, and, and chances are we're going to do okay by it. But, uh, the, and I don't think they're going to be able to get in here and rent it out for $7,000 a month to somebody. But what they'd have to do in order to do that is destroy the apartment. And if you saw it, Bubs, you would just go, wow. You know, people walk into this place and they go, wow. And uh, mainly because the outside looks terrible. But (laughs) they go, wow, this is something. (laughs) You know, and then we take them through the place and it goes back and back and back. And there are, you know, three bedrooms. And one of them I made into an office and... We have a huge kitchen and a pantry and two bathrooms and uh, a living room, a dining room, and a foyer and a dish closet, which is uh, yet the size of another room. So it brings our place to about 11 rooms in size, I think. Sounds like a mansion. Yeah, yeah. We were very lucky on two levels. Number one, we got ripped off so that we had a case. And and secondly, that we uh, we found it, you know, so it's it's it, but it it's we have been fighting, you know, and it's been take it's, t- it's taken a while. We're in here f- over four years without paying rent, Jesus. and chances are they're never going to be able to, they're going to be able to get rent out of us eventually. But you know, uh, the past rent, eh, I don't I don't think so. You know, our lawyer seems to think that. That will all be worked out, okay? That's great. You know, but uh, uh, what you have with landlords, and, I, you know, I guess this is the way they, they all are. Right? It's not ours in particular, is they're very stubborn. Like, you you know, if they're in kind of a legal action, they will not give in to it. They will take it all. They'll try and send you to the poorhouse with lawyer's fees. Uh, and, uh, and there are, we are not really fighting the landlord. In fact, the the landlord is actually being sued along with us by this guy who should have never sued anybody because he's asking for a world of hurt. So, uh, you know, it just goes on and on and on. And uh, I, my lawyer sent a year end thing about 
all the things they had done in the year. And they said, and we finally settled this case after eight years. And I went, what? <laughs> you know? I'm only into my four, my fifth year now. Eight years? Wow. The legal, yeah, I don't. It's so tedious. Well, we 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 we're hoping and praying, and then the lawyer seems to think so that we're, she, he says you're never you're going to get all that money back you've been paying me as a lawyer because somebody's going to have to pay it. You know, this is not something you asked for. It's not something you caused. So you know. That's our that's our little tale of our of our woe or whatever it is, uh, and it's been it's been an interesting uh, situation, but uh, we have a good lawyer and you know, uh, and they hold little mediation meetings and they go to court on one thing or another and then another mediation meeting and then you know and nobody nothing's getting settled, all right or not even close to a settlement. Yeah, I know. Uh, I'll tell you when uh, the court system worked fast. It was a hundred years ago. <laughs> really, the guy that uh, shot William McKinley. Yeah. He sh- he shot him in September, I think, of '01, and the trial and conviction and execution was done by the end of October. <laughs> oh, really? <laughs> yeah. Wow. And McKinley wasn't. Guess they didn't have a big appeal. Process. Wait, man, am I right or wrong about this? But McKinley wasn't even dead yet. Well, no, that was Gar- that was Garfield that lasted for months. Well, I thought I thought McKinley had a was shot with a bullet. It, it went into him. He was so fat that it didn't immediately create a problem, but they couldn't find the bullet. No, that was that was Garfield. Was that Garfield? Really? He was he was shot in July and died in September, so. Oh, okay. All right. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, so McKinley, McKinley died immediately then. McKinley died immediately, and uh, almost <laughs> his assassin died <laughs> not much longer than that. Boy, they sure didn't wait. There was no appeal, was there? They, you know, no, it was two months. So Today, that would go on for 20 years before they oh, could yeah. execute him. Wow. I, well, you see, I, I will believe you because you are the man who knows the facts. Uh, yeah, you should look up. The thing about Garfield was... Uh, that's an amazing story. He got yeah. He got that. He got shot. Then die, and they, the doctors kept trying to get the bullet for some. Yes, we got to get it out, and they they made the situation worse. And he just, but he went on like for two two and a half months. Didn't they also bring somebody in who created a thing that could find the bullet, some kind of electronic, some kind that of that sounds vaguely familiar. Yeah, there's. A, I think somebody wrote a whole book about this. Yeah, well, I when I was a kid, I went to Garfield School in North Beach. Um, that was my that was my grade school it was Garfield School and I always felt gee I was going to a school that was named after a president who was assassinated <laughs> you know and up to that time he didn't have Kennedy so I think there were only what three presidents who were assassinated up to that point uh, yeah let's see we had Lincoln Garfield McKinley yeah yeah um, so um, uh, yeah so uh, uh, Garfield uh, was. Uh, people say, "Oh, so they you named him, they named your school after the president?" I said, "No, after the cartoon character." <laughs> I went to Odie High. <laughs> I went to Odie High. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I mean, it's really, really silly. Um, but anyway, so, so uh, I, I guess, uh, how did you get to that whole thing with McKinley? I guess because I said uh, this this court case is taking so long, and he said, "Well, you know, court cases didn't used to take long." They yeah, come out I, with everything a, drags you, out. So I I read that recently about how quickly that case was over. I thought, "Wow, that's, well, they wouldn't do that these days." You, little items like that in either the paper or wherever you your reading materials are always catch your eye, don't they? Yeah, you love, love those stuff like that. You, you love those weird facts. You can throw them out at parties, and everybody will think, "Wow, look what he knows." <laughs> Like if Oswald uh, hadn't been a shot, uh, he uh, that trial would still be going on, probably. <laughs> <laughs> well, uh, let's see. They they did convict Jack Ruby pretty fast. Yeah, he was. Uh, I think was probably within a year, maybe. Yeah, yeah, and then uh, then he was dead within another year or something like that. 
You know who would have uh, prosecuted, because it wasn't a federal crime, so Oswald would have been tried in Dallas, and he would have been tried by Henry Rowe, who was the Roe versus Wade abortion case. Oh, really? Yeah. Ah, okay. So anyway, that uh, you know, uh, see, 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 folks. More fascinating facts. <laughs> More fascinating facts. We should start a whole show on Gabnet called Facts with Bub, <laughs> and 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 you just come on with a fact of the week or something like that, you know. Uh, anyway, hey, well, you got you got you got all the movie facts. I like that. I know nothing about the movies. So. Yeah, yeah, I know. I know quite a bit about movies. Yeah, I guess. I don't know what. Well, you know what it is. It's. Uh, um, we're, we've run, kind of run out of time here, but I'm just keep go- <clears throat> going a little bit. Um, what happens is I do you ever have uh, do you ever get hit with the idea that you suddenly realize you know more about something than you thought you knew? Uh, I'll give you an example. I was doing an interview with uh, somebody who wrote a book about uh, the Old West, the history of the Old West. It was a big, thick book. And we started talking about, oh, the bad guys of the Old West. That was it. And I started uh, talking to him, and I started naming certain bandits from the old days and then uh, going to this and that. And the guy's looking at me like, did you read my book and memorize it? And I went, no. And then I started to think, where did I get all this information? Yeah, where would you get that? And what it is is that you find that there's a kind of an area that kind of interests you, and then whenever you see a fact, it just attaches itself to you, you know. And as you're doing yeah. this all subconsciously, so I was talking to him about Bob Black Bart, and you know, uh, uh, I can't now I can't remember a lot of the stuff, but the there was a. a a bandit who was a uh, was black and you know and this guy and that guy and he was just amazed at how much i knew and i was amazed at how much i knew too so i think that's what happens with you i think you have certain areas that just absolutely are fascinating to you and anytime you see any fact about that it just kind of leeches onto your brain that must be yeah yeah, yeah. and it's all subconscious what? it's all subconscious anyway listen i'm going to let you get back to your sick bed Yes, uh, and, and hope that your sick bed gets better. Uh, maybe it's a maybe it's a deathbed. It, it, maybe it's a. De- <laughs> oh God, Bubs! Well, I'm going to call you next time, and it's just going to be no answer. I'm ready to go. J- just so. going to ring and ring, and uh, well, old Bubs is gone. <laughs> Say something nice about the funeral. <laughs> it, it, yeah. yeah, do you want a funeral? Uh, not really. I don't. I've, I'm not sure. I don't, definitely don't want to be buried. I don't know about you, but yeah, I I want to be. I want to. You know what I want? I used. To, let me. Uh, that's, uh, we're way over time, but the hell with it. The people can wait a second while we talk here. <laughs> I used to in New York City. We had to do these like live reads. They call them live reads, and you would read a live commercial for, you know any one of a number of companies. And the one that always got me was the one I had to read and was the hardest one for me to get through without breaking up. Why be buried with an ordinary burial when you can be buried in an above-ground mausoleum? (laughs) And I always thought, that's what I want. I want a mausoleum. I want to die in New Orleans. Everybody's buried above ground. Yeah. In crypts. And the reason they're buried in crypts is because the water table is so high there that if they dug down six feet, they'd hit water. Mm-hmm. So that's why they buried people. And sometimes they would take a, I can't remember what they call it, but they used to take like five or six people and uh, and bury them. And then after they have kind of turned into a skeleton, they would go back in and bag the bones in like a, some kind of canvas sack and put it in the back of the mausoleum so they could get the next guy in there. Jesus. And and that's I can't remember there was a name for that bag. Uh, I'm gonna have to look that up now. It's gonna drive me crazy. Hey, listen, get better. Thanks, buddy. We want you to get better. Uh, it's my hope from Jerry Lewis. You get better. Let's yeah. hope we both avoid the flu. Yeah. Well, anyway, I love talking to you. You know yeah. that you're my. I love talking to you, man. My favoriteest guy, and we'll talk to you in, in either a couple of weeks or maybe next week. We'll figure out. 
whether you're dead or not. Yeah. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, Larry Bubbles Brown. Ta da! This is GabNet, the Great American Broadcast Network. Talk like you've never heard it before. And that's our old friend Larry Bubbles Brown, and I always enjoy talking to the Larry. He's a he's a great guy. He's a great guy, and he's full of knowledge. And uh, we should have him come on the show. every time he comes on the show, come loaded with some weird fact that he came up with. Anyway, let me uh, get rid of uh, the music panel. Let me get up the citizens panel. Let me turn on the citizens panel. I love you, citizens panel. That's the way I turn on the citizens panel. Oh, what? Well, but and then I, I thought I'd clean this out. I have to clean this out here. Uh, and we clean it some more, and we clean some more, and we get rid of even one more. And there we are. We're clean now. I I have to. I do all the work here. Why do I do all the work? I have no idea. Anyway, look, our uh, our number here is. Uh, Available to you on gabnet.net on the right hand side of the page. It'll tell you exactly how to how to um, uh, negotiate the thing we call the citizens panel. Tell you how to get on there, how to get Skype. And there's also a phone number if all you want to do is just call by the telephone. It's just you can't have as much fun because you can't see the rest of the panel and the panel can't see you. And so when you want to talk, it, you know, it, it, it's you know, it's better if you use Skype. Let me put it that way, because then as people who are watching us on Facebook Live will soon note, you'll be able to see people who are, uh, uh, who are uh, uh, part of the citizens panel. And uh, I don't know, I, we're probably not going to hear from Phil tonight, because he's traveling. Uh, so I don't know if, if, who we're going to have. Tonight's going to be a surprise, but if you don't call because Phil calls, then maybe it's a good night for you to call. He likes to call it a fill-free night. We like to call it the show getting reasonable. Anyway, see these bags under my eyes? I've got those bags. And so the one thing, the one reason I don't want to do the TV is because of the bags, because they're terrible. Now, it's it, how much would it cost me to get rid of that? $5,000 or 4000 Well, if I get the, I, I have a medical procedure where they're going to lift the eyes, okay? Uh, because I need that medically. So if they do the this at the same time that they do that, then uh, they can uh, can get rid of the bags for four thousand dollars. They get a thousand dollars off because you know one visit serves all. So girlfriend sent away for this stuff she saw on television said it gets rid of the bags under your eyes in five minutes. So we tried it the other night, and I'm not wearing it tonight. Maybe tomorrow night I'll 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 have her do it to me, put it on when she's on. Uh, but it it does remove the bags. I mean, it, it's kind of like I don't know, it's a glue or something, and it just like pulls everything. In your, you can feel your whole face tightening right here, and the bags. Uh, the, I looked at the bags disappear, but the problem is I still got the upper lid thing. With the, uh, see how red it is in the, well, anyway. So I'm sitting here waiting for people to call, and nobody's calling. Uh, and, oh, well, here comes Charlene. At least some, at least somebody loves me tonight. Uh, let me see here. But we, let's see, do, can you get a light on there? We can't see your you face know, that much. Can, can you hear me, Alex? Oh, I can hear you fine. Just you, to, know what, you know what it is? I can't find, I was trying to test the video. Yeah, I, I think I have to do something with the brightness or something. No, no, your brightness is fine. It's just there's no light on your face. I know. If you, you look, saw light you look like you're in a witness protection program. Right, or like remember the old David Susskind? They'd have like prostitutes on. Yeah, and they did. And they would yeah. black out their face or something. Yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> so you know, that's uh, that. Uh, that's the way it goes, folks. Anyway, we're waiting for other people to call too. But uh, how's everything out in New Jersey? Ah, it's like you know, cold. You know, whereabouts in New Jersey? Like, whereabouts in New Jersey do you live? Like central? Do you know central? Well, I mean, like where where Rutgers University? Yeah, but is, I mean, like. but it, is there a town? Is there a name of the oh, town? In, in Jersey, remember Joe Piscopo? What exit? Exit nine. Ex <laughs> yeah, but what isn't the, isn't? Don't you live in a city? Isn't there a city you live in that like oh, your, no, when your no, mail like, gets to you, it says? No, it's a borough, a little borough. 
and it's called Spotswood, and nobody knows what so, that is. So, in other words, if I send you a letter, I go Spotswood, comma New Jersey, and then the zip code, right? right. And, and that gets people, to you. People say, "Where's that?" <laughs> yeah, I don't know where that is, but you say it's exit nine. Exit nine. Yeah, in New Jersey, that what you want in doubt, always tell the exit. Yeah. Oh, okay. <laughs> That's fun. Yeah. Uh, I want the girlfriend do the. Uh, Call that. Is she going to really do that on the bags on your eye? Well, no. I, I did it the other night to see if it works. And the stuff does, does Stuff does work. But, it, you know, if I – let me put it this way. It's very temporary. If I were to go and wash my face, it would wash it all off and oh, I'd have the bags okay. back again. It's kind of pulling and gluing it, it sort it's, of. It's, it's, yeah, it's something. I don't know fake, what it is. Fake, fake. Yeah, it's not. Well, it's not fake exactly. Mm-hmm. I mean, it's kind of like an instant facelift without all the surgery. But right, it's but right. it's only it's only temporary because the minute you start getting rid of the stuff that's pulling it together, so I may do it anyway. You know, I may do it anyway. Hey, look who's here! We haven't seen him yet this week, but there he is, and uh, in his lovely studio with that very present voice of his, Rob Alfano. Can you hear me, Rob? Rob, hello. Well, that was Rob Alfano, ladies and gentlemen. Thank you very much. <laughs> I have no idea what that was about. Are you there? Um, um, uh, yes, I am. You are there, Mike? Okay. Just wondering. Uh, did you read in, uh, uh, in the New York uh, Daily this morning? I, I, didn't, I don't read the New York Daily News. Because they said something about Trump. Will not go to London for the new embassy they just built because it's a bad uh, deal. No, but they don't want him there. Isn't they don't want him. They, they, yes. they, 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 he's afraid to go to London for the fear of the of the negative uh, reception he would get. They told him he's not invited to the royal wedding. Yeah. Yeah. So. Or, 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 or uh, Obama isn't either. I don't know. Well, I, I, I don't know why that. Obama wouldn't be because Obama was interviewed by Prince Harry recently. Yeah. So yeah, they're, they're kind of we talk, they're kind of pals. That? Yeah. Uh, isn't the uh, the fiance um, like biracial or something? Yes. Like Prince Harry yes. and all that. Yeah. And Queen Elizabeth is cool with that and everything they well, say, yeah. right? Yeah. The family seems to be fine with it. He's not going mm-hmm. to be king, so it doesn't matter. Oh, yeah. it's one of those yeah, well, things no, like Paula Simpson. I'd be, Paula Simpson, it didn't matter either because well, he wasn't going to be king. Or, well, no, oh, it's I, the other way around. The yeah, other way around. Sorry. I um, uh, actually, to tell you the truth, um, uh, uh, I would love to, if I were in the royal family, like that would ever happen. I'm not that Gentile. Uh, uh, if I were in the royal family and, I, you know, uh, I was in birth order, I would want to be the second. I wouldn't want to be the first because I wouldn't want to have to be king because then I can go out and marry the woman of my dreams, you know, and whatever, uh, and, and not have to live up, you know, because the guy who's going to become king has to watch who he, who he marries. I think they give her a, don't they give her a test or something to make sure she's a virgin? Oh, they do? Yeah. I, wow. I didn't know that. They send a doctor in to check her vagina out and make sure she still has her uh, maiden's head. As it were, although you know you can lose that and not have had sex, so I don't you can, know. You, you could lose it riding a bike or something, yeah, can't you? Yeah, I don't know how how strongly they stick to that now. You know, finding it, it going out and finding a virgin, you you got to find somebody who's a little wacky in this day and age. There's something a little off, you know. <laughs> right. I mean, You're right. well, look what happened. They found Diana. She was a little off. You know, she wasn't, and she didn't exactly have everything going for her. She was, she was I wacko. I never knew she was the virgin princess or something. Oh. Yeah, yeah. Uh, I learned something today. <laughs> the virgin princess. Well, there was and, the, vir- uh, the, 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 the Elizabeth. The virgin princess. Uh, Elizabeth the uh, first was. Uh, the virgin queen. Was the virgin right, queen. Right. Although I don't know Virginia. if she was. Virginia. Virginia is named after her. Yeah, I don't know if she was exactly a virgin queen, however, but. Uh, at a certain point in her life, uh, because I think the man she loved died or something like that, uh, she decided that she would never engage. Walter Raleigh. I just I, saw a, a Was it, was it Walter Raleigh? I think it was the man she yeah, loved. Yeah, it was. Walter Raleigh. Yeah. 
The yeah. love of her life, yeah. He died from smoking too many cigarettes. You know, nobody gets that joke anymore because I don't think oh, they make. Right, I don't tobacco. think they make Raleigh cigarettes any longer. Right, no tobacco. Yeah. No tobacco. Anyway, we could use some more callers, folks. And what happened to Rob? He just kind of like boom. Maybe. I thought, you know, doesn't that call get bumped off and then you have to call back? Well, that wasn't the point. He's no. he's online, and yeah. I don't know what happened to him exactly. Yeah. Uh, right, right. But uh, anyway, uh, we'd love to hear from you, Rob. If you're out there, I don't know what the what the story is. Maybe he didn't mean to call us. Could that be? No. <laughs> he but he but dialed you somehow. I'm no, it was like it was know. like he couldn't hear us. Right, right. Some, right. Something like maybe that. He's have, maybe he's having problems. Yeah, yeah. Hello to Jeff Stein, Jeff uh, from Connecticut. Um, hello. Hello. He's so mellow, you know. It is getting cold again. It it is getting cold again. You know, I I get to the point where I just don't go out anywhere. Let me look at my watch and see what the temperature is now. Well, it, wait a minute. Hold on. Come on. I see, I have my uh, my uh, Apple Watch, which I love, by the way. Uh, Twenty eight degrees right now in New York oh, City. It's not bad though so compared it's, to it, that minus eleven. Well, period. it's got to be colder out where uh, where. Uh, or Jeff is because I think Connecticut is usually colder, isn't it? Yeah, particularly where I am. Yeah, yeah. Uh, we're a little higher up, and that makes it. Uh, what part of Connecticut are you in? It's it's called Oxford. Have you ever heard of? Them? No, not really. Not really, That's, but then again, we've never heard of plant. Where, where are you again? Uh, Spotswood. Well, Oxford. Spotswood. Spotswood right. Spotswood. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, the only the only town that matters is New York City. Let's be honest right. about it. it. Is no, 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 no. Every, everything else is a suburb. Old oh, Sacramento sucks. <laughs> New York sucks too. I used to. I, I, no, it doesn't. It just it, it's not fun like it used to be. Would you agree with that, Jeff? It used to be a lot more fun when it was a little dangerous and yes, you know, uh, a little dirtier and it had. Forty Second Street was fun. It was fun. Yeah. Right. Yeah. You might get robbed. Right, right. While you're walking. While you're walking. While you're at, while, while right. you're at the uh, peep show or the, you know. While you're, while you're at Needix having a hot dog. Huh? And a guy stuck his hand in my, <laughs> in my pants. Yeah. Trying to lift the wallet. And, yeah. and took a couple of bucks out. I remember the old Kentucky Fried Chicken they had years ago. Uh, you'd go in there and you had to, like, uh, guard your biscuit. Like these bombs. What, what do you mean whatever? by guarding your biscuit? That sounds kind of like a <laughs> yeah. euphemism for something. Oh no, I'm not Honey Boo Boo. She, she, I know what her biscuit is. Yeah. Yeah. But but the um like my friend, you know, we're sitting in the in the you know tight in there trying to eat our chicken, and all mm. these like old bums would come up or something, and I'd be like, No, I'm eating my biscuit. Get away from me. <laughs> They'd say, Oh, can I have the biscuit? I'd be like, No, I'm gonna eat it. Get out of here. Yeah. <laughs> Wow. Those were the good old days of uh, 42nd Street, right? Yeah. And the uh, the arcade for the pinball machines. Oh, yeah. oh I, I used to go up there all the time. The 40 Deuce. They well, I, well I, always, I always used to wax poetic about Hubert's Museum. Do you remember mm -hmm. Hubert's Museum on 42nd Street? And, yeah. And, and, and in the window, I always like to talk about this, in the window was the ultimate display of knives and dildos. <laughs> and I'm kidding. just wondering if somebody by accident bought the wrong one and tried to use it. But no, in the in, in in the window, the display was knives and dildos. Mm -hmm. And I went, huh, and how appropriate! What Show World is still there, though, right? Show World is it? I believe it is. Yeah. They left Show World, but they cleaned up everything else. See, I mean, I don't, I, I don't know. How, well, it could be. You know something? You might be right that Show World is still open because what I read was the guy who owned the building, owned, owned Show World, owned the building. Now let's see if we – do we have you now, Rob? I think so. What was your problem before? Uh, oh, I've been away from this computer since like maybe a week, and uh, all updates happened, and there's a new version of fucking Skype. Yeah, there is. And it, it it looks nothing like any version of Skype I've seen and every setting was off so I couldn't hear you. This isn't you this isn't me. this isn't the one that uses the browser, is it? 
No. No. This is another version of Skype. Looks very different. Is this on the PC? Yes. It's funny because I have not gotten any notifications of a new upgrade. I went and I clicked on the icon, the Skype icon, and mm -hmm. all of a sudden it automatically uninstalled and then reinstalled the new Skype for me. I had no control over it. Oh, I don't let them do that. I had yeah. no control. So over what, it. what's what's new about the new Skype? It the the interface is completely different. It doesn't look anything like the old interface. Well, how does it look? It looks uh, naked, it, like you know, across the top of Skype in Windows, you got all the different menus. Yeah. Now I, I don't even know where the hell to find that. I I had to go crazy to find yeah. it. Uh, like I'm right now, I'm seeing a full screen of four of you. Oh, okay. That's all I see. I don't see the tools anymore, like to go to you know uh, settings and all that. Well, there must be a way. Oh, you're right. I don't see it either, Rob. Y right? It's all. Yeah, you yeah, know something? Right. I'll bet you that has something to do with this. Like one button you push that brings those things all up. I'm sure. I, I yeah. found them when I was disconnected, but it took me a while. When I when I called, I was mm. like, okay, they can't hear me. I don't hear them. But right now, I mean, in the picture part of it, you see the four of us, right? Yes. In, in f four, four quarters. And I don't see me, though. Yeah, no, usually, you're, usually oh, it, it, you're, you're, you're at the there. bottom or on the side or whatever. Good, because I'm glad they kept that form together because I need that for my show. Mm. Oh, look what they do now. You can drag, if you click on your picture and drag it and let it go, mm -hmm. it, it's you now in a little oh, circle it, in the corner, and I am I took your place in the square. Well, you see, I, if I do it, all circle that does is bring, my, is bring my bring my picture up, say, like that. So, uh, Interesting. Yeah. Well, this well, is all new. And it, well, it's it could all be I haven't upgraded to the newest one. But, uh, What's Hallow Lens? All I is care I about, all I care about is the picture of the four of us looks about like it used to, right? Yeah, it's four even right now, yeah. four even like uh, yeah. in, in high def, uh, what do you call it? Um, Pictures. So what they've really changed is the interface, not the picture on the, on the screen and what it looks like. Yeah. Because that's no, all I care about because that's all we put on the air here. Right. See. Uh, I'm just curious about how it's going to look when there are more people on. Oh, I'm sure. I'm, I'm sure it'll do exactly what it always does. It will push you over to the side and place the new person in there. And yeah, I, I, I think we'll have to wait and see if somebody else calls. Yeah, you know that may or may not happen. Uh, so that, where have you I, been? Where have you been that you didn't get close to your computer? You must have been out on the road or something. No, just uh, busy with stuff around here and just at night not feeling motivated to do anything except lay around for a bit, watch TV, and then go to sleep. Nothing, you know, crazy. Just yeah. just doing stuff downstairs, yeah. doing stuff, you know, Yeah. time goes. And then it, all of a sudden it, I look at the clock and it's time to so go to sleep. So you probably haven't gotten my email yet, right? I that. I did. Oh, okay. That's, it's in Dropbox. Oh, good, good. Because I, all I have to do is change that, you know. Somebody, uh, the, the sports show, which, you know, nobody pays attention to because he only does it one night a week. And some nights, he, some weeks he doesn't do it at all. So you can't get an audience. But I, I, you know, I let him do it because I want him to develop it. I'd love to see the thing on four days a week because we could use a sports show, you know. Uh, and uh, so he decided he's going to be studying or something on Tuesdays and Thursdays, so he has to move the show to Wednesday. So I have to change all the graphics. I have to change the the, the commercial, oh, no. you know, the spot and everything like that. And it's a pain for a show that really is hardly even there, you know. So um, thank you so much for doing that. That was nice. Of course, it was pretty simple, but it was nice of you anyway. One line, I, when I sat down here, yeah. I did it. Yeah, yeah. And then I, well, I, I came home, you know, when I come in and the computer's not unlocked and sitting here in Windows, because yeah. I don't lock my computer when I get up, it's here in my house. Yeah. And I was like, oh, look at this. It's a Control-Alt-Delete. That's not good. <sighs> and then so Yeah, well, you know what I hate about, what I hate about Windows? Now, I got to tell you, I am very surprised at how good Windows is. You know, I stopped using Windows for years and went to the Mac and... Every time I ever went to a Windows machine, I went, this sucks. But finally, with Windows 10, and I got a machine that was pretty fast and terrific. And I really think Windows isn't that bad now. 
Well, take it know. from somebody who uses it every day in, yeah. in a work laptop. Yeah. It still sucks. It still sucks. Okay. It still takes forever to boot up. It's still, and I've got solid state drives in the, in the, and it's a new uh, computer. It's just a piece of shit. And it takes forever when it has to do updates. And it's, Oh, I have you ever tried it? Do you have a Mac? I do. Do you update the Mac? Sure. How long does it take for that fucking Mac to update? Any update takes at least an hour. Yeah, but the difference is with the Mac, it's not like with the PC where I where all of a sudden I've got no choice but it says it says to uh I have no choice. I have to shut it down. Oh, 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 oh yeah. I yeah. Fucking updates well, there. When you go to reboot it, when you go fast. to re reboot it, it goes uh well you can you can start restart it but after you update. You have to update in order to get yeah, out of the computer. Update. In the meantime, and, that's not always convenient. Sometimes I, I'm running out the door. I go to shut my machine off. I haven't done so in a few I, days. And I think you should have the options, right? Yeah, you know? It's unfortunate, but you don't. Okay, now, we, now we've now we got five people. Are you, can you see five people now? No. What? I only, see the, I only see the same four. You can't see John Rockwell? No. That's why I called in. I heard you were looking for a fifth here. Yeah. Huh. Isn't that interesting? I do oh. not. Oh, look at that. He's in a little tiny circle. This isn't yeah. good. Yeah, he's only in a little tiny circle next to me. There's still the four big pictures. Right now, John is in a little tiny circle in the upper right hand corner. For me, it's Charlene in the little tiny circle in the upper right hand corner right. next to and my I, little I, tiny square. I don't have any little tiny circle. Okay. Now there might be well, a way to do with those away with those tiny little circles, and I'm thinking it has something to do with if you if you if you uh, put a. a uh, your cursor over the top of the screen, you'll see there's like uh, three dots, and that's the no, screen options. That. Screen options no, for this call. Not dots here either. I've been looking. Uh, just at the top of the screen, it's it's screen options. Yeah, no. Oh, I have that. I have that. And that might be what changes it. You know what? It just changed for me that that went away. What? Now it just says Skype. Really, it doesn't say uh, doesn't doesn't say screen options. F uh, it for did, the, for but this all call? of a sudden it went away when you yeah. told me to go over. Well, it it, it'll, this now is... Now it's back. I, I went, now I see John Rockwell's name if I go on his picture. Yeah. If, oh, okay. Now, I what see, kind of machine uh, are you using? You're using Windows, right? Yeah. Yeah. I'm not. Oh, you're not. I'm on the Mac. Yeah. yeah. You're now, not going to be happy. I should send you a screenshot of this, Alex. You're not going to be happy with this version. Well, of, it could of, be uh, that that can be fixed by changing the options. Well, I'm looking. I, I see one. There's a button here that looks like a smiley face, and it says ah. reactions. And I click on that. Yeah. And what that does is it brings up, uh, like, emojis that I can Okay, put well, you don't want that. You yeah, don't want no, that. you don't want that. You don't want that. There's another one that says open call gallery. So if I – all that does is open up – it shrinks everything. It squeezes the screen down, and it opens up a gallery on the right-hand side. There's nothing there to see, so I can close that. Yeah. Other than that, I have nothing at what's on the lower yeah. right here. Now, what happened? Conversation that's just going to open up a okay. chat window. Okay, you have, like, for instance, you have a, a circle as one of the things there, right? So, mm -hmm. A circle, right hand corner. A, a circle with uh, John in it or whatever? That's correct. Okay, what if you double click on that? Nothing happens. Oh, he goes full screen and everybody else goes into a circle. Oh, <laughs> oh that's great. That doesn't work with me so with Charlene. No I double click. I double clicked on her. No, nothing so happened. To get everybody back, what I have to do is uh, so I can click on uh, once on each uh, each circle that's there. And now I've got four back, and John is again by himself in a little circle. If I click his little circle, nothing happens. If I click what, my sir my square, mm -hmm. what I, if you make your screen your uh, your the landscape of your of your Skype just a little bigger. Drag it out and make it bigger. What happens? I've got full screen. Mm -hmm. Really? Yeah. I clicked on you. I clicked on you, Alex, and you went full screen. Everybody else is in the circles. Little, yep. Little circles in the upper right. Oh, so you're going to love this. So no squares. It's all circles. Don't, update. Don't upgrade, Alex. You if get... you double click again, it goes back to four people. Four people and the one left over, That's which is right. Charlene, is still a circle. And the rest of you are... You know, one, two, three, four. I don't have any updates whatsoever from Skype. And do you have Windows? Yeah, it wouldn't let me log on last week or whenever it was until I updated. It would. It just. It wanted me to like reload every or do everything. You know. 
Well, sort of the Skype you, will. You, you, you if, undo if, it, you, you update. If you, know, if okay. you don't update, it will nag you every now and then. But you just yeah. say, "I'm not going to go fuck yourself." Oh. Well, I didn't know that. Well, I didn't have that option. I, cl well, I clicked this... on Skype logo yeah. that's that I always click on, and this is Windows 10, and it must have, um, like, did an auto-update as part of the Windows updates that happened. Hmm. Well, so it, I, uh, no it, choice. It doesn't uh, – it, it, you can, it, if you go up to uh, Tools – yeah. What what is that? Hide context, okay. Oh, wait, if you go up to tool, if you go up to tools, up, and, 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 and you go, from Skype and you go to that's the problem. I, there is no more tools. What I have now, and when I get to the reg, the regular screen, I can't see any of you right now. I get uh, there's a a button that if I mouse over it, it says one new notification. The one next to it says contacts. The one next to that says call, and then there's three dots which says more. When I click on that, I have application settings. Uh, audio and video settings, and report a problem and rate us. Application setting, settings, I can, for chat, I can make some changes here. Okay. I can display large em emoticons. Fuck that. <laughs> <laughs> well, well, you know something? I, 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 I have a funny feeling about something. That you're mm -hmm. using a browser version. Nope. No, I, no. I know what the browser version is. Really? Yeah, I know. Because it, every time I, it asks me, do you want to go to that new improved version for Skype? I'd say no, because I, right. I want this. OK, that's what right. everybody is seeing. So, uh, you know, why do they do this to us now? Are they going to fuck up my TV show? Is that what they're going to do? <laughs> yeah. that way, uh, I wouldn't I would fight tooth and nail. <laughs> you don't want this. You know what happens eventually, though? They go as of a certain date. The old Skype won't work. Right. And then you're forced to do it. But now, this is really odd. So I went away, and now I'm back in the call, and I don't see anybody's picture. Do you see my picture? Yes. Yes. Yeah. You're fine. I think that you, you got something. There's something that uh, weird there, because you don't have that version of it, do you, uh, Charlene? You say you don't see it that way. No, right? I don't. And no. you don't see it that way, right, uh, Mike? No. Uh, yeah, and and John, what do you see? I see what I see what Rob sees, but with Charlene in the circle instead of me. Yeah, I got there. The four of you, the first four of you. I don't know when Charlene w mm. went on. Yeah, but four of you are sharing big quarters of the screen. Right, and then in the corner, there's me in a little little rectangle. Charlene in a circle, about the. Size of a quarter. Okay, but Charlene in a circle is she? Does she move and everything? Oh yeah, in that circle. Yeah, yeah. absolutely. I have no face it's not a pro. Yet. It's not a. Well, it may just be a, something that I'll have to program. that I will have to deal with when it happens. Something weird you know. just happened with me though, in that I <laughs> no longer uh, can see anybody's video except my own. I see everybody's picture. That's interesting. There's yeah. got yeah, to be. I see, I, see, I, see all, I, see all, I see all five pictures yeah, here. Yeah. No problem whatsoever. See, everybody who's watching us right now, you can see what we're seeing here. And that's not what Rob is describing. Yeah. Uh, and it hasn't at any point asked me to, uh, to sign in to Skype again or to uh, upgrade Skype or do I want to upgrade Skype. That happened about a week ago, two weeks ago, something like that. So. I don't know. I mean, I uh, but I always refuse that notion they have that I should uh, I should go with the new improved version that's just for Windows 10. Right. Well, I've done the same thing. And, that, told, and hey, you can what, get out of that. I, you can what, reverse that. But when you do it, uh, I actually I, watched an application uninstall and reinstall when I clicked on the icon that I always click on just to launch Skype. Really. Yep. So, be careful with that because one of these days that could happen to you. You're just going to launch the normal icon and you'll see an uninstall happen and then the, the icon disappears. And then do, suddenly. Do you have your automatic the, update turned off? Windows automatic update is no, not. No, turned no, off. no. I'm talking about your Skype automatic update. You don't know. <clears throat> is one? I, yes, there is one un, under tools, but apparently. I don't have tools anymore. I have application settings. Well, I'll try. It, you might it, try that. But then there's check for updates. There, then there's a Jeez. thing called automatic updates, and you click on that, and you can either turn that on or off. I think I should rate this piece of shit. Hmm. Rate us. Zero. 
Zero. Zero. Minus zero. Minus zero. This sucks. Well, I clicked on, I've been clicking on everyone, and I have it now where Charlene is is quarter screen and Rob's in the circle. <laughs> you know? Yeah. Everyone else. But the circle gets had, the square. I Remember two, that? <laughs> at one point I had two of you, then I had three of you, now I have four of you, but I can't get five of you. <laughs> so I don't know what's I'm going curious. on. That sounds you know, that sounds more like the version that I got when I when I tried it on my when I called the show once using my iPhone mm-hmm. or my iPad, that was the format for the iPhone and the iPad. Oh. John, I'm curious. If you, when you mouse around the screen, you see in the upper left, you see the people's names, and then there's an arrow that goes to the left? Yeah. Click on that arrow. It'll take you down. Five people in on the call. Here we it'll go. take you back to the, like, that black screen where... Oh, no, it goes back to the, it goes back to the, uh, to the screen where I can find, where, right. you know, that, that has a list of all the calls that I've yep. been on. Right. Now, go, now you go screen. back. To go back to the call, you click on the see the on the upper right hand side. It says "Go to Call," the green button. Uh, no. <laughs> really, on the upper right hand wow, side. Wow, folks, uh, I don't have any of this on my I version, and um, Charlene doesn't have it on her version, and there she's using Windows, and Mike doesn't have it on his version, but yet you two have it on your versions. Now, okay. how are I just, you? I just found a. I just on, on the right corner was. The little rectangular screen that just had Charlene in it. When I double clicked, I'm back to the four people in the, you know, qu- this divide into quarters and, you know, the way it was before. So, so I don't know. <laughs> so I'm back to the four quarters too, but I see nobody's picture anymore. And I'm not sure huh. why. All I see are, are your, your, I your can't. photos. Yeah. Your, your photos. <laughs> yeah. I had, I, your photo was on for about five seconds at one point. And Charlene was frozen for about about half a minute, and then and then unfroze. So I mean, it's and that just may be, you know, the speed of my crappy uh, Spectrum service here or something. Well, like that. I, I don't, yeah, I, I don't know what. I'm gonna, well, whatever. Back. <laughs> hmm? So I, I'm going to hang up and call back so I can get everybody back again. Oh, okay. Oh, okay. right. right. Uh, yeah. <laughs> anyway, he's going. Well, let's talk about some stuff. This has got to be boring. Yeah, really. This, yeah. this probably isn't boring for the uh, for the video people, but it's probably yeah. boring for the audio people. So, mm-hmm. yes, right. John. By the way, your question about whether Show World is still running, it is. Uh, at least they, they used to have a. There was a space on on the corner of Eighth and Forty Second. That I think the guy actually mm-hmm. sold. Oops. But the theater that was halfway up the block is still there because I walked by it a few days ago on my way to do a recording, uh, audio recording, and I just you know Show World uh, is still there. checked on Google Maps. It's still there. Yeah. <laughs> so what what's there. happening with you, Rob? Everybody's back. Everybody's yeah. back. Is, you know it's weird. What? I could now drag and drop any picture. Like I'm dragging Jeff around now on the screen. Oh, uh, really? Yeah. Mm-hmm. Dra- I'm dragging Rob around. Right? Yeah. Can, I can drop them now. That's oh, weird. Oh, really? But uh, but everybody's yeah, on the I mean, but every, everybody is on the screen now at the same time. Yes. Yeah. Mm-hmm. So you've got John, you've got Mike, you've got Charlene, you've got Jeff, and you got me. And Charlene's in the little circle. Mm-hmm. And Charlene's in the little circle. Circle yeah. gets the square. Now, Rob's <laughs> in my little circle, so <laughs> <laughs> But at least I see it. Who knows what's causing her? Yeah, anyway. yeah. Ah, so if I drag the little circle over Alex, then Rob, you become the in uh, a quarter size thing, and yeah. of the thing, and Alex is in the little circle. Right? Yeah, that does work. Ooh. <laughs> where do you where do you move those things? You have to move them to get them to go to be a little Just circle. Drag it. Yeah, you you click on you know you place you, it. You, you click on. The oh, and so somebody else gets bigger. So that means I'm going to have to work twice as hard doing this fucking show for the video, oh, right? No. Just turn. You might have. I don't know. Just turn off your own. Make sure. Try to be. Yeah. Are off. Mine was probably on. No oh, boy. Well, I, uh, I, I'm not. I'm not looking forward to it. But what I'm going to do is I'm going to try this. See if there is a new version uh, on my. Uh, on my. I have another PC in the other room. And check that yeah. out. And, and play I will with tell you, it there. it's great though. The video. Really? Yeah. Not it looks bad. Good. Well, it looks great here. Look, look at Jeff. Jeff is, mm-hmm. you know, his video is terrific. Mike's yeah. always sucks. Um, Thanks. Yeah. Oh well. Uh, yours looks great, mine's, Rob. Mine uh, skips and uh, hops Charlene bit, is, the is picture is, quality is good. Yeah, his high def. So you know, it's good. Anyway, I want to I want to talk about okay. something today. You know, uh, our president lied today. Oh, geez. I mean, what, how's this day different oh than any other day? 
And no, I'm going to say how he lied because I I started looking things up and so on. He to begin with, he gave a speech today about how wonderful everything was with the tax stuff and how things were happening and how businesses were coming back to the United States and blah, 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 blah. And on some of it, I, I had to say, okay, well, I'll give you a little credit for a few little things. You know, like people are going to get some money back in their paycheck. Not going to be a lot. Is it worth, you know, five five pieces of silver to give your soul? But, you know, I'll have to give him that. But then he says, Apple today announced that they're going to invest $350 billion in America. Yes, I saw that. I don't know where he got that information, but that's not exactly the story of what Apple is doing. Apple is bringing $350 billion of their money back from the foreign markets because they can without a huge penalty. Okay, but that doesn't mean they're going to spend it all. Well, they did say they were going to do something like 20,000 jobs. Yeah, but that's in Silicon Valley. They're going to open up another campus. And if I were them, I wouldn't expand that company because I don't think it's going to be doing as well in another couple of years because this current doofus who's running it is running it into the ground. Yes, Jeff. Isn't this because of what they were uh, buying stuff? In Ireland. Oh, no, that's a different story. That, reduce taxes. No, that's a different story. The, the Irish government has, has uh, fined them, what, 200? What, how much did they fine them? I, I, I uh, missed the, uh, I read the story. A lot of money. A lot of many millions. Yeah, $250 million or something like that. No, this is about them saying they're going to take their money from their foreign markets where they've been sequestering the money and bring it back as they can now. They're going to bring $250 billion, $350 billion back. But they didn't say, like Trump was indicating, they were going to spend $350 billion in yeah. this country, and that was a lie. Okay? They're going to because, put it in a different bank. Because yes. I thought about it for a moment, and I thought, oh, you're going to, you're going to invest $350 billion in, in here in America, Right? And I'm thinking, you know, for $150 because I did the math, you could give every family in America an iPhone 10. <laughs> right, that would be the way I, to do I it. I wouldn't mind one. Y yeah. Uh, or why don't you lower your fucking prices, you price-gouging motherfuckers? <laughs> you know? Uh, right. Of course, you know, Apple lives with the idea that there's a fillborn every moment. So they can keep those prices up uh, the way they are, you know. But, I mean, I, I've, at first I thought, and, and in a way, I even just hate Apple for making a big deal out of it because they're giving Trump plausibility. And it's enough for me to say, it. what? I think they're all doing it because of social media and because like back in the you know back in the the last time we had trickle down economics real, social media hadn't really taken off and so now everybody is all watching to see now that the, these uh, these businesses got these major uh, you know so it's all about press i think they want to come out they want to look good that they're doing something with this jump, jump on the bandwagon like yeah i think Walmart it's they're not looking to make trump a hero i think they're trying to make themselves look good because they're doing a little something but don't they understand it uh, doesn't a guy like uh, who's the head of apple what's his name again cook cook tim cook doesn't tim cook realize that when he does something like this he gives trump credibility he does. And, and 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 this is a guy giving Trump credibility who has every reason not to because he's gay. And, cool. and, and Trump's politics affect his lifestyle, okay? Um, that I would do everything not to, I mean, I would say, okay, let's bring the $350 billion, but let's not announce it. Let's just do it, you know? And then let's announce we're going to open up a new campus. We're going to hire. I don't, is it 20,000 or is it 2,000? I can't remember. I don't remember. I know that the number two was there. Yeah, I think it was 2,000 people for this new but, campus. But that, that's not, it's not going to cost them, you know, how many billions is that going to cost them? 
Yeah. That's what I'm saying. They're all doing a little something because it makes them look in the eyes of the, the public, you know, it makes them look good. And yeah. it's not just, well, look, <clears throat> see, we are in reinvesting this money. Don't try to take these tax cuts away from us and try to put a positive spin on the fact that they just got the money. Well, so he gave, they gave everybody at Apple a thousand dollar bonus. How much money is that compared to the three hundred and fifty billion they're bringing back? Right. You know, just give us our give sell Apple stuff cheaper. OK, I went out yesterday and bought an Apple TV uh, uh and that cost me like $180. By the way, I wanted the 64 gigabyte, and they didn't have any in stock. I said, do you have any at the other stores? And they said, only one other store has one in stock. And I'm going, what kind of company has this become that they don't have a 64 gigabyte uh, uh, Apple TV? I mean, I the know. difference in price between that and the 32 is only 20 bucks. I didn't know Apple TV stored. It stores uh, apps, is what oh, it does. Okay. Yeah, yeah. So, yes, uh, uh, John? Uh, yeah. No, uh, the thing I'm wondering is they're bringing all this money back. Originally, the money where it is now is there being held because it's not taxable or whatever. So that's not – bringing it back doesn't mean they're going to – that definitely doesn't mean that they're going to spend it. Mm -hmm. They're just now going to hold it here. <laughs> you know, it's like instead of holding it over there where it's cheaper to to store all those all those billions, uh, there's not what what makes Trump think that they're going to actually use that money instead of just leaving it yeah. in a couple of big, you know, in a big couple of big banks that probably, uh, you know, will be now. You know, drooling over Apple. Well, <laughs> Apple, Apple has been notorious for not spending their money. Mm -hmm. I mean, when you when you've got three hundred and fifty billion dollars that's cash on hand, mm -hmm. you got to ask some questions about: Are you investing this money anywhere? Or are you just keeping it all for yourself? And mm -hmm. what do you you know? Most companies don't want to hold on to that much money. Mm -hmm. You know. Well, yeah, if they actually invested it. You know, somewhere, especially in American, other American businesses and stuff, mm. that would be that would be very yeah, nice. That yeah. would be very helpful. Doesn't mean they're going to. By the way, we've been joined by Tony Magno. Uh, how, where does Tony fit in your oh, scheme of things? On uh, your another picture? little circle in mine. Yeah, four is it? Four is it? And then if four. I if I wanted to make uh, if you wanted to make say Tony one of the four, how do you do yeah. that? By clicking on it. Double him? click on the double okay. click or or, or drag. drag and drop. Or drag and drop, and yeah. and uh, yeah, I just dragged and drop, and Mike's now my little uh, little uh, guy. Hi, Mike. Yeah, but but, but is he? <laughs> does that circle? Does he move within that circle? Oh yeah, yeah. It's a little it's a little jerky, but that's uh, I've had that problem on all. I have that problem on all. Of them. Well, if it happens, I'll 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 learn to live with it. Okay, yeah. you know. I think it's just my. I don't think this is. A, I may yeah. have actually. I think I may be on. Uh, Oh no! I thought for a second I was on uh, Wi-Fi. I'm not. Okay, I'm on the regular, my regular cable um, modem yeah. thing, and and it sometimes is do, doesn't give me very uh, smooth, uh, especially when you have like five or six people. Right. But you uh, know, it's, it looks pretty good now. So <laughs> any, anyway, that that kind of pissed me off today. I don't know. I just I, I just I don't like people like Tim Cook going ahead. And giving Trump credibility. I don't think it's in the best interest of him. I don't think it's in the best interest of his company. I think they should still begrudge Trump anything, even though they got they have all this loose money running around. Hey, look, I made uh, I have Vanguard. All right, I'm a, not a, a big huge financial account, but enough. And uh, I think since the first of the year, I've made about three grand. Mm -hmm. Okay. No, I guess I have Trump to thank for that. I don't know. I guess he's the only guy I can I can I can place it to the doorstep of. I don't give a shit. I still hate Trump. He can't buy me like off. Him. I don't give a shit what he does. <laughs> you know, and I know that this money that's gone up, that I've suddenly got this windfall, it's going to turn around and go the other way soon. Hey, uh, can I say something? Yeah. I, I emailed something to Shecky because I sold a book, and you say it's Trump. I sold a book that I bought for $5 because it had Trump on it, and I graded it. I got $200 on a Trump sucker. <laughs> on a, what? What's this? And $14 to grade it. 
It's like a mini Trump comic. They, I had it up for 300 bucks. I took a best off. I didn't care. And the guy offered me 200 I said, that shit sold. Said, you just sold it right then and there. Yeah, he didn't pay me yet, but he's got to. So I'm waiting to get paid. What do you mean he's got to? What do you do? Send out the com- comic police to beat him up if he doesn't pay? <laughs> no, but, but when, even when they... When they when they when you accept their best offer, they really have to make a they have to give you a notification of a payment. He has good feedback. But I mean, I'm not trying to brag about Trump, but I actually these people are mean. One guy messaged me, he says, you know, I can get that for a lot cheaper. He says, I don't care. I says, so get it for cheaper. Said, yeah, if I can sell it for two hundred, fuck you. Yeah. I got another copy inside. I go home. <laughs> like, I, don't know why. Oh. I was in work, I says, Oh my god, I sold that I said, I can't get this all for uh, so uh, anyway, so I, uh, how do you guys feel? Do you feel that uh, Trump has made your life better now as a result of this? Uh-uh. No. Well, no. Uh, I... yes, Jeff. Well, he uh, uh, Jeff. No, he hasn't been do, done much for me other than po- uh, poison. Uh, and uh, the only nice thing that I heard is uh, that the doctors, not the honest doctors, the real doctors, who were able to give us real evaluations about him, is he's got uh, some good uh, heart problems coming he out. He does? Yeah, yeah. What do, you, what do you mean some good heart problems? There isn't a good I heart problem, is there? He I mean, have a heart attack. Do you think he can go? What, what, what well, they... no, he'd probably have a heart attack or have to oh, have no. a stent. He's high cholesterol, a little plaque here and there. They say you always say McDonald's a lot. He's, well, who's the no, he looks doctor that's on CNN, Gupta or whatever? He was he was looking at all that stuff and said, "Yeah, you know, overall not too bad, but for his age, you know, the sort of hard things you probably get at that point if you're right. if you've been eating a lot of junk food yeah. and playing playing golf instead of anything that's really active." Well, you're gonna get you're gonna get some heart. Like I have a heart thing, uh, but it's so minor that my doctor, who is a cardiologist, on top of being just my general practitioner, isn't even really worried about it. He looks at it every couple of years, and I have a, I have a mild stenosis. But for my age and whatever, that's not considered, you know. You're, you're expected to have it. You're expected to it, you, you, Right. Yeah, a certain amount of stenosis. But Well, uh, his uh, plaque number went up drastically. Really, and that's a sign. Yeah, the, the, so and that, that means he has a cl- closed artery. That's the sign of heart disease, which could yeah. cause it could close the artery. It yeah. could, could close. I'm, artery. Wish you know, it. Block, oh, yeah, block I'm I'm just hoping he keeps so eating those comments. those uh, I, I, that he keeps eating a Kentucky Fried Chicken and a McDonald's. <laughs> like and well, I'd say a breakfast burrito game. every day is in my particular uh, prescription for his health. You suppose that's just a regular hamburger. He has to have a lot of cheese on that. Thing. Yeah, yeah. Although I, I have a, 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 I have a diet with a, just a lot of uh, fats and stuff like that because of the low carb thing, but it's also taken fifty five pounds off of me. So I think I'm better off than I was without having all that stuff. Uh, mm. You know, and they, they, it, it, my cholesterol also went down too. You know, so. What's yeah, that? his cholesterol isn't all that great. They've said that that's been they're, a consistent thing. They're upping uh, his, which sort of makes sense. Looking at his weight and everything, he's probably had pretty high. And what he eats makes yeah. sense. They're upping his Crestor to get, bring his cholesterol down. Well, you, you can only go so high with Crestor. I mean, I'm at the top on Crestor, and it's like uh, twelve or something. I don't know what it is exactly, mm-hmm. and. Um, uh, you know, after that, if you still got cholesterol, you got to do some diet changes. Right. Plus, plus, if you take the pills all the time, certain amount of time, the pills will work for a certain amount of time. Then all of a sudden, it says, uh uh-uh, uh, the pills are not going to work. Oh, no, you're wrong. You're absolutely wrong. No. I, I've talked to doctors who say the greatest thing that has ever happened uh, to medicine in the last uh-uh. many years have, have been statins. <laughs> And they said the reason, one guy said, if I if I have a kid, I said, when he turns 13, I'm going to start him on statins. He said, <laughs> because statins in somebody's system will keep cholesterol away. Do you hear the same thing, Jeff, that statins are, no? No, no I, I didn't hear that. So I, 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 I know it, I, I'll tell you, I don't know. You don't know? Yeah. You, you, you probably know. take a statin, right? Because you had heart problems. Yeah. I do, because I went through that whole heart failure and 
thing and 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 flew it around the heart and all that yeah. thing about a year and a quarter ago and uh, but i was doing it even before that mm -hmm. it's generic the generic lipitor it's overstatin it's a basic very small pill not 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 a lot of it and it's mostly just because i was always i had been on the edge of being you know sort of on the edge of where you shouldn't be and then they lowered those numbers so then i was over the edge so my doctors oh, let's put you on that and i'll drop you even in, but, into a much safer after, area. after the heart yeah. situation what did you do to make your lifestyle change so that your heart is going to be in better shape? Did you alter your diet? Did, what did you do? Well, I, I did do all there some of it. I'm, I've lost weight in the last year, not as much in the last five or six months, but mm -hmm. I lost a bunch of weight from uh, when I was in the hospital in November of, of 16 until about June or July of last year. That was a good almost 40 pounds so that really is really what sort of helped out well it's very but good i haven't really done anything much since and i'm not i'm not just for from economic necessity i don't have a lot of money to, to do really fancy uh, uh diets or anything i try to eat you know a little cross-section of everything but uh you know that to make it somewhat balanced but uh no i'm not doing that much but i haven't really had any uh major problems uh yeah cardiologist looked looked at me last summer and thought it was okay in fact i'm waiting to hear from uh a new cardiologist because the old guy decided to move his practice uh to arizona that was a good idea it's awful cold here <laughs> but, yeah. but no i mean everybody seems to think you know i'm just sort of hanging in there so uh it's i don't think it's you know yeah i don't think my health problem my, my health problems seem to be pretty pretty stable and what you know it's happening you know i have other other things that i'm more worried about like the economic problem and other other stuff you know finding more work and doing all that so that's right sort of what i'm aiming at you know but no but satins are i mean i i also was able to get off of because i am a heart i'm on a heart uh, thinner blood thinner and yeah. i had been on warfarin and then they put me on zarelto a couple of years ago and if, when they first said oh you can this this works for people that had blood clot, DVT, blah, blah, blah. And when I went into the hospital with this other thing, they said, well, we don't like the fact you're on Zarello because it really is hard to get you off of it and onto heparin or whatever you're in, you know, while you're in the hospital. We're going to put you, when we, when you get out of here, we're going we're gonna to put you back on the warfarin. I'm like, okay, fine, especially since Zarello was so expensive. Yeah. That right now, I've, I, it's, you know, generic, generic uh, Lipitor's. You know, I can get like uh, three months of it for like six bucks. You know, it's like. I'm well, I good. suddenly, I'm I happy. suddenly, I suddenly realized that my career uh, uh, it gave me something good uh, hmm. because we're, we're. What happens is, is that when you're on Medicare, all you young people, see you later. Uh, <laughs> when you're on Medicare, uh, you have to pay. You have to have a supplemental as well hmm. because Medicare will take care of eighty percent. But the other 20% has to be taken care of by someone else. And you go out and get supplemental. Well, at work, a girlfriend gets uh, Oxford. So we use that as our supplemental. But it doesn't pay shit. And the reason it doesn't pay shit is that the deductible is like $1,000, you know, yep. and, oh, wow. and things like that. So I've never, I've never, they, in the whole year, Oxford has never paid for anything. All right? Mm. So I, 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 the rest of it has to come out of your own pocket. So all of a sudden, I get this thing in the mail from my business manager. He says, here, I got this from SAG-AFTRA. I qualify for their supplemental senior th thing, right? Excellent. Now, Excellent. a supplemental for Marjorie and I would at least cost $300 a month, I think. Mm -hmm. Wow. Uh, this costs mm -hmm. us $534 every quarter. That's and, not bad. And it's... it's it's a better medical plan than uh, uh, the Oxford thing. Uh, on top of which, we get dental, and it's not the fifteen hundred dollars that you normally get for dental. Oh, it's twenty five hundred dollars for the dental. You know, you have the full vision. You have you have all your medicines, same pretty much thing, and it's only uh, you know once every three months we give them. Uh, uh, you know, and her business, her company is going to pay for it. So, you know, 
I'm changing to my SAG after plan. It's it's actually it's Blue Cross is what it is, but it's molded to keep after and SAG happy because they've got you know tens of thousands of members, most of which are di- old people just like me. <laughs> yeah, don't yeah. they take a percentage of uh, of your of your Social Security monthly as sort of the basic Medicare thing, and then you have to add on. To well, that yeah, they take anything. for Medicare. They take uh, they take get they get about a hundred and ten dollars a month yeah, or something. Well, yeah, mine just went up to about hundred. And then if you yeah, if you want like the prescription thing, that costs a little more. But the, mm-hmm. if you have things like a supplemental that has prescription, which this one does, you don't have to worry about the prescription thing. So you know, mm-hmm. you're taken care of. I yeah. think. Yeah. Is your Mar- is Marjorie going to go with you? Okay. Yeah, yeah, she she be on the same plan. Yeah. Now, what happens if you have a, a son? Uh, it also covers your dependents as well for the same price. May- I, I looked at it all, to, uh, all across. It said, "Here's how much for you: five hundred thirty-four. Here's how much for you and one dependent: five hundred thirty-four. Here's for you and up to two dependents: five hundred thirty-four dollars. Because it's it's a supplemental." But could I be one of your dependents? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> but within the supplemental, I, it takes care of my uh, of my um, um, what do you call it? My uh, prescription medicine. So, mm. yeah, you know. Uh, so uh, it, it, to me, it's it's uh, it, it's terrific. You know, it's really terrific. But I, I, you know, it's the only thing I've ever gotten out of my union. To tell you the goddamn truth, mm. um, you know. So I. Um, but I I, be, I belonged to that union whether I was working under its auspices or not, forever because I I believed in being a union guy, and so I have been a member of that union. Wow, since I was when was the time I first had to have the union, first first job I got with the union I was so proud of myself. Um, I think I was thirty something like that, maybe a little younger. No, I was younger than that. Yeah, no, I was like. 25 something like that so how many years have i been a member of that union long time a long time (laughs) anyway let's uh let's get back to a few other things here uh you you know the the uh, here in america we've had this whole uh me too movement and everybody goes apoplectic when some guy pinches some woman on the ass and and then he loses his career never works again in this business and that's all because he pinched one little ass one time right um we should save the 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 yelling and screaming for the harvey weinsteins of the world and the kevin spacey's from what we can see because scotland yard is looking at his situation and not try and go after the uh uh you know, the guys like uh, 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 Aziz, this guy, what's his first name? Uh, uh, Ansari. Uh, Ansari. 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 Uh, and he said he was sorry. So I don't know what the problem is. <laughs> there you go. Uh, it, 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 you know, um, and so, the, but the French actresses lately have been coming out. The other day, Catherine Deneuve said she found the whole thing just silly. You know, and listen to the latest French actress who anybody have an idea you probably don't know too many french actresses so you might get this one can anybody think of who the french actress today was that came out against the me too movement i have a feeling all the ones i know are dead now (laughs) well i thought this one was dead by the way so hmm leslie Leslie caron no leslie caron's dead she's She's gone she's long no no Mm. And I don't know if she was French. I think she was an American using a French showbiz name. Uh, mm-hmm. Here we go, folks. Another French actress has spoken out against the climate of sexual misconduct allegations that has prevailed in the entertainment industry since the takedown of Harvey Weinstein. The AP reports that Brigitte Bardot oh, God, oh my Lord. That one. said in an interview in the Paris that. Match Weekly published today that most of the actresses who've been speaking out about sexual harassment are hypocritical and ridiculous. Yes, that's ridiculous now. The comments by Bardot, 83. Boy, do I feel old. Mm -hmm. 83. Uh, yeah, she hangs in there. Follow a backlash against French, uh, a backlash against French actress Catherine Deneuve, who signed on an open letter expressing her similar sentiments. Deneuve later clarified her position. The AP reports that Bardot suggested many actresses 
are in part responsible for the situation because they tease producers in an attempt to land parts. Ooh. Well, well, they knew that was the the way to land parts. Unfortunately, the star of "And God Created Woman," a program, a movie that was very seminal in my sexual life as a young man. Um, uh, say, actresses uh, as uh, uh, many actresses have come out with sexual misconduct allegations, so we talk about them. Bardot oh. said in the interview that she has never been the victim of sexual oh, harassment. Good, I'm glad. Adding that she thought it was nice to be told that I was beautiful and I had a nice little ass. <laughs> now, what do you call that movement? Women like this now that are going the other way and saying me that they sorta? don't mind. <laughs> no, not me. <laughs> I don't know. Yeah, not me, Club. <laughs> but uh, 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 so Deneuve, Deneuve and Bordeaux are saying that this meet you thing is silly. Well, I suppose according to this, up. according to this, Denove has kind of recanted a little bit of it. You know, I think she saw too much it's of a backlash. Far, is what you're saying. Alice, she, I thought you might have said, I got it the other way. Didn't she do repulsion with Polanski? No, Deneuve? no, that was not. That, oh, okay. Not I got Deneuve. Myself that was uh, who was that? That was it. Was <laughs> it was a film he made in, in Poland, and so it was what started him. We're, yeah, we're but nice I, I, I don't, th- I, you know. Time to click on the internet movie. Well, hey, IMDb, really here we old. go, here we go. It's really old and it's black and white. Repulsion. I know, Repulsion. Uh, We're all looking it up. Hold Maybe on it was that, uh, not Norwegian, who's that guy from Sweden? Or, oh, Catherine God. Deneuve. Was it I Catherine guess, Deneuve? Uh, Catherine Deneuve. I thought I was Henry. right, it was Catherine Deneuve. Yeah, yeah. she was, uh, yeah, Compulsion, yeah, a Repulsion. Mm-hmm. Uh, takes place on a boat, feel. doesn't it? Most of it, a lot of it, if I remember correctly. That was the film that made him put him in the limelight. Uh, mm-hmm. Well, remember that she, that Catherine is famous for her commercial where she said, "It's not easy being Catherine Deneuve." Well, but you know, I I tried out for that commercial. We, we were talking I told about the story it. the other night. Famous, yeah, right. yeah. I, I tried, I tried out for that commercial. Doing. Yeah, and they, it didn't work. Saying they asked me what it's like to be Alex Bennett, it just didn't work. <laughs> no, <right. laughs> no, but it, it, it was uh, Catherine. Did, yeah, it, it, she got the. It, I tried out for this commercial, and a lot of guys were there trying out for it. And eventually, they gave it to Catherine Deneuve. And I went, "How do they go from that to that?" You know, <laughs> rewrote it a bit. Obviously, that's weird. You know. So mm. anyway, um, so there's that story. And this is this is kind of the really interesting one today, I think. I wish Patrick were here because this affects his uh, the woman he has uh, wet dreams over, uh, Megan Kelly. Um, uh, let me see here. You aren't frozen, are you, uh, Rob? Oh, OK. <laughs> you were looking at something and I, I could not tell whether you were frozen or not. Um, a top staffer on Megyn Kelly's show has been fired for claiming there is a toxic and demeaning environment on the set rife with bullying and abusive treatment. This is according to New York Post, page six. A report. Kel- mm-hmm. Kevin oh, Blair <laughs> was fired as a writer for Megyn Kelly Today this week after complaining that Kelly's two top execs, Jackie Levin, these are women, and Christine Cataldi, were bullying lower-level staff members. The report notes that Kelly has made fighting abuse her personal crusade, plus in the wake of the Matt Lauer filing, uh, firing, NBC has ordered all staff to report workplace bad behavior, supposedly without fear of reprisal. Well, the story reports that Blyer sent an email to Human Resources at NBC News and was fired shortly after. That's crazy. His, mem- his memo was published in the UK publication, The Daily Mail. In it, Blyer writes... I'm sad to say the executive incompetence continues, as does the dysfunctional management, abusive treatment, maddening hypocrisy, staggering inefficiencies, acidic and deficient communication, and relentless scapegoating. Jackie Levin persists in creating a toxic and demeaning environment, and Christine Cataldi enables and reinforces it. The Post adds that Blyer claims Cataldi regularly calls her assistant an idiot, And when offered suggestions for the show, Levin uh, called him a fucking whiner. 
<laughs> well, I mean, how does he really feel? I <laughs> guess, I guess, I guess this kind of demeaning thing in the workplace doesn't apply to women, does it? Apparently, a w women here are getting away with it, but uh, and a guy is being fired for it. Doesn't make sense, does it? You should sue. Oh, oh you'll probably. Oh, oh, I'm sure he will. I'm sure he will. Mm -hmm. I mean, uh, he should be down at the uh, at the at the state uh, offices for whatever this is uh, uh, tomorrow morning. Absolutely, you yeah. saying thank you, NBC. Yeah, because NBC said, "Oh, you got a problem? You you think there's a problem with the? Uh, you know, just give us a give us a you know, write us a little note. Yeah, we'll be happy know. to hear from you." Tell other employees who huh? feel like they're. What does that say to other employees of NBC News who feel that they're, uh, you know, that they're victims? Does that does that give them that warm and fuzzy that they can go and no and complain? It, of course it, not. No. In fact, in fact, that makes them not want to do it at all. Absolutely, you it's know? ridiculous. I mean, uh, you know, I mean, which is it, what women, which is what women in similar situations have the same thing. Well, but here, here we have a reverse situation. We oh, have yeah. two women who are running that show who are now being well, it's not sexually exclusive to yeah. be an, to be a you know manipulating well, asshole. Yes, oh, but know. but NBC isn't looking for that. What they're looking for are the no, guys sure. who are going to be abusing their power. They're not looking for the women who are, who are abusing their power. Or at least not making it an equal and, thing. Now, he may he, have a he, 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 listen. A I'll, I'll 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 give him the same I give anybody. He could be lying. But, you know, the fact is we're not taking him on face value. We're, we're dismissing. NBC's dismissing what he said, and they dismissed it so much, they dismissed him. Mm -hmm. Why would he lie about that? What, what would be the purpose of lying about that? I don't think, I, I don't think really he's lying. I think, he, I, think he, exactly. I think he saw a hypocrisy there, and he decided that he would test NBC and see what they would do if he wrote them and said, to HR, here's my problem. Okay, yeah. and and he didn't. I mean, it was it was it was terrible. It's terrible. Uh, but you know, what are you going to do about it? You know, um, Sue. This Sue. Th this thing, this whole thing has gotten way out of hand. You know, it it, it, it and it. What what was an important movement at the very beginning? I mean, the unmasking of Harvey Weinstein was, I think, very important. Okay, I think it was important because this is a guy who's been getting away with this kind of behavior for the for twenty twenty five years. Okay, repeatedly. But when you then start looking for everybody under every rock who ever patted an ass or said, "Hey, you look cute today," or whatever, uh, it demeans. The validity of that whole Weinstein thing, it only, uh, um, what can I call it, it uh, erodes away at the, at the, at the strength of that, that argument. Uh, so where we got down to um, um, Aziz Ansari and what happened to him this week, which everybody seems to kind of be on his side, um, uh, it, it so demeans the whole Me Too movement that uh, it, it lost all credibility when that woman made that claim about and season. Sorry. Yes. Uh, um, uh, <laughs> Tony. 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 Alex, if, if social media was around in the 70s for, for you guys, like for, I mean, for, with all the nightlife and everything, what can you envision what would be happening with social media? For, well, you see, you can't. You can't because it didn't exist. You know, yeah, okay. uh, what, uh, uh, you know, I mean, uh, it, it, social media and I don't know that social media is, is, is a catalyst for anything. If anything, I think I, I kind of at times don't want to believe social media. I think a lot of lies get uh, get spread in social media. Yes, Mike. That's because you're intelligent. There's a lot of dummies out there. Yeah. Yeah. You think the Me Too movement is start to uh, unravel a little bit? More and more each well, that's day. what I was saying. It's unravel. It's unraveling because of of this the the women who decided to take a personal argument and 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 make it public and make it seem like it's harassment and so on, uh, and and demean the meaning of it. I mean, this woman who wrote this anonymous thing to this women's site called I don't know Babe or something like that. It's called yeah, and and went after Aziz Ansari. 
um, uh, uh, completely demeaned the whole movement. You know, she took away any credibility it might have, any kind of sting, because from here on in, nobody's going to take these things seriously. We're back to where we started because of women misusing that platform. Yeah. Does that make sense to me? Do you disagree with me, Jeff? Cause yeah. You, huh? Yeah, because I, well, I heard uh, a woman, it was not that woman who was this, the uh, secret person, but uh, another person who's, who spoke about it. And and uh, she said that that the system has overdone what was supposed to be. Attended. Yes, yes, yes. Okay, and I know Alex, you've been trying to to get that started for the last several months, mm-hmm. and uh, without a lot of success. But the, but when the women start doing it, uh, it uh, you hear it. And, yeah. and it's a and it's a lot clearer, and and it seems to get a good response. Of course, that's one or two out of thousands yet. But I I think the well, you have, the world you have, you have you, start turning around. A you have a very leftist senator who's no longer a senator, in yeah, Steve in uh, in Al Franken. 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 I mean, you have. Um, uh, certain people like uh, like uh, uh, what's his name um, um, the comedian uh, Aziz Louis C K no, no Louis C K oh. who yeah. who was accused of stuff he did admit to having done some improprieties years and years ago and then F X who fired him from all his shows did an internal review and came out yeah. with a statement that they could find nothing wrong that Louis C K ever did. Now, my question is, so have they hired him back yet? Doesn't no. seem like it, <laughs> you know. So here, here we are. We're allowing the instant ruination of people without, without some kind of credibility. And so when some women see that, they go, oh, well, I don't like what he did to me. And, oh, hey, I, I want to get my name in the papers. And so now you've got all the people leeching onto it that discredit the very positive, very hopeful and helpful premise of the original movement against Harvey Weinstein. You know, so I, I, that, that, that's, that's where you have your problems. And social media has caused a lot of that. The fact that women can write a, a, a tweet uh, anonymously and disparage people and then everybody takes what they said for truth rather than saying, we don't even know who this fuck this person is. You know, so I, I mean, think social media is a cancer. In our society. I, I agree with you. I, you know, I, I've said this before, that I, I, I believed in the future. I believed in, sci- in the, this wonderful technological future that I was going to be living in, and I'm living in it now. I really am. And all I could see were the positives. But I didn't realize that most people misuse things. Yep. You know? Um, I guess the only thing they don't misuse is a dildo. You know, uh, but they they misuse things, and and that this just wonderful advance in communications has turned to crap. It's been used by a foreign power to erode an election. It's been used by people to disparage other people and make them lose their life's work and living and worth. Uh, and sometimes their life. Yeah. So suicide, and, and, suicide, uh, people suicide. have caused suicide, uh, committed mm-hmm. suicide over over tweets. Oh, yeah. uh, you know, now, it's new thing now. Hmm? Uh, did you did, have you heard about this uh, Tide Pod? Yes, I, I knew oh, you. I, when you started to talk about it, oh, I thought, no, yeah, like Tide cinnamon, Pod, like the cinnamon so thing. I, I was watching CNN, well, <laughs> and they had a guy on um, who said that what Tide or Procter and Gamble has to do now is to take it off the market. Oh, good. Children oh, are eating it, minute. too. Yeah. Wait a minute. Wait a minute. But, yeah, no, it, I, I, I know where you're going with this. Keep going. This is just stupidity. And if you're going to eat a pod, well, then you deserve what you get, which could be death <laughs> or break down. I don't care, whatever. But what really, I mean, now the company has to take these off the market. Not children. Now, if you have a little child, a two-year-old eats it, I'm, that's different. But a teenager... A who challenge. Could, yeah, they yeah. challenged them. To well, eat there, it. there was something about these pods, if you've ever seen them. They're very colorful. Yeah. And children have been known to accidentally Not eat children, them. 
These are teenagers. Well, no, no, but let me let me go back to the children first. Uh, to accidentally eat them, which has led Tide to put warnings and and right. to tell parents to watch out for this. And and, and parents- they have commercial. They have a commercial they where that commercial. where the where the the mother sees the little kid playing with a Tide pod and takes it away. And it's part of that. I said this is you know they make put sure. a childproof zipper on it. Yeah, though, so they have the a childproof. Well, that's it. it. They say they put this childproof. Yeah. So, so of course teenagers. So they've no done due diligence on this, but now you got these kids who are doing this t- Tide Pod yeah. challenge in which they d- go on YouTube and 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 eat a Tide Pod, oh, yeah, yeah. which, you yeah. know, my feeling is if that... chew on it. Yeah, it I don't think it's Tide's out. responsibility. And if the kid dies, well, I'm sorry, we've thinned out the herd and Darwin wins again. Thank you. Yeah. <laughs> exactly what I said to my wife tonight. Yeah. I said, Darwin wins. That's, you know... Yeah. If- if you're a if you're a deer and you're being hunted by a doe maybe or a little fawn and you're being hunted by a bigger animal that's going to eat you if you're slow you're going to get eaten if you're stupid enough to eat a tide pod when you can clearly read well then same thing yeah let's 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 clear out the herd let's lighten up the the surface population and and uh, move on yeah that's what I say let them we- do it you want to eat them? Sure. Why don't you try? You know what's really good? Put that, pour that, get the tide, and just pour it. it that pretty blue liquid. I'll uh, bet drink it. it. Drink it. it. Mm. Come on. Right. Fuck sort it. of like a blue margarita or something. <laughs> I, uh, <laughs> needs to take this product off the market. Really? Yeah. Well, uh, you know, uh, I think part of the problem has been with that, you know, you've always had these packets that you put into your dishwasher. Right, mm-hmm. or you throw into your wash. Yeah, I don't use them because they have fragrance, and I don't like f- uh, fragrance don't on my clothing. I just like them to wash my clothing. But mm-hmm. they made these pods very colorful. I mean, they're they're like you know sw- got a swirl, and they're like two colors, and they look and, like gummy bears. Yeah, and a little ki- a little kid size. would be attracted to that. That I can see. But if they're doing the packaging to limit the risk of kids playing with that. Then I think Tide has done due diligence, and mm-hmm. and why should they do anything else now? Now YouTube is saying, "Well, we're taking all these things off. We're not going to encourage this kind of behavior." Too, yeah, yeah. Well, you know, yeah. Uh, whatever happened to the good old days? You yeah. see, that's what will happen YouTube when you don't allow people to show blowjobs on YouTube. I, I think we let them show <laughs> themselves before they start voting for candidates like Trump. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That, oh, uh, yes, uh, uh, Jeff. <laughs> so. I I have a little different attitude, maybe, and I think there's there's something right here. Okay, it's some pills. Yeah. Childproof cap. And it's childproof, right? Mm-hmm. Now there's no kids in my house, uh, but yeah. my grandkids come sometimes, mm-hmm. so it's not a bad idea, and it doesn't hurt me. Now there are some older people who can't. Even open it up and they have an alternate to that but also yeah. around the house you got a little cap to prevent yourself sticking the electricity on your finger right right mm-hmm. yeah okay oh, baby now, i i remember baby doing that when i was a kid oh <laughs> I, I was you're still your finger in the light so I, I did it most kids who stuck mo- most yeah, kids so- there there are two things most kids who stuck their fingers in a socket didn't die but they got a <laughs> shot never, never did it again. they got a shot at shock and we never did it again right. how many here as kids exactly. got an electric shock at one time or my, another my, i did my cousin anthony did it in, in merrick he put his he got electrocuted but he, he cried but he did yeah, he's yeah. not the brightest still alive. All I know <laughs> is that you never do it again. But he's still but he did do it. Yeah, the yes, problem Jeff. is, outside of the United States, their voltage uh, is twice the amount. Well, they so they're we using they, they they use I think they, they use I think they're using mm-hmm. no they're using DC over there. Really? No, two twenty. Two twenty. Am I? Am, 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 Australia. Wait a minute. Hold on a second. I, I think two twenty. Is is DC? No, it doesn't happen. I think it's AC. I think it be is both. it really? But it's yeah. it's a lot more. <laughs> it's bigger. Yeah, bigger. Yeah, voice. it's scary because I I remember I was in Australia working on a project and everybody said be very cautious about the two twenty because uh, 
you you could really knock yourself out. Yeah. Yeah. Well, all I'm saying is I remember getting a shock. I think it was once with some Christmas tree lights or something, and I never did that again. You know. Yeah. Last weekend I had a party here, and and the, the pool table was open, and my friend had his little boy. He's probably four. And he, you know, the balls were on the table and, and the kids, instead of grabbing sticks and playing pool with the sticks, they just took the ball and they were hit. They were hitting the balls into the other balls by mm-hmm. just throwing the balls. Well, he, this kid, all of a sudden we were standing there talking and all of a sudden he just, he was holding a ball in his hand and he slammed it into the other balls and didn't take his hand away. All of a sudden, he went down to the ground, and he started screaming. He'll never do that again. Next yeah. time, he'll let the ball go. He won't hold on to the ball. And, and Snatch get his hand up. Yeah. Balls. Guarantee he'll never do that again. This is the way we learned not to do things like that. Not yes. to touch the stove, not to do this, not to do that. Uh, you know, our parents could tell us, don't do it, but that wouldn't be the life lesson. I mean... Yes, they always told us, don't do that, don't do that, don't do that. But when we finally did it, we saw why they told us, don't do that. Right. And I, I mean, I'm fine with the, with the tide thing. You want to make sure kids can't get into it. Yeah. But, That's what I, I would recommend. But if these, yeah, if, the, if these kids want to do a, a YouTube video of it and swallow them and, and chase them down with water, hey, that, you know, thinning out the herd. Okay. Just, <laughs> yes, uh, John. Well, the, but the thing is, and this, and you knowing, have you noticed? And I think you, there are probably whole websites that have all these wonderful legal things that they're put on the sides of stuff. What you shouldn't do with certain things, including things like pencils, don't stick them in your eye, and all, because people sue all that time. Yeah, there really are some amazing. And you'll find them occasionally. I have a friend who's a uh, Facebook friend who loves putting up weird, funny things he finds like that. I do too, but where literally it's like what's well, like those the it's like the the ads for all these uh um for all these medicines where they if it's you know if it's uh cialis you know do not take this if you are allergic to cialis well uh, duh. You know, no i like all the i like all the i like all the i like you i like on those ads all the contradictions that they list Right, oh, because yeah. of course they don't want to get you sued. You could die, and uh, yeah, well, yeah, yeah, for yeah. sure. But uh, it, don't but, overdose on this. No, <laughs> but the point is that uh, 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 they list all the contradictions, and the last one inevitably is death. They, mm. they, uh, they give the whole list, and the last one and death. <laughs> you know, and no, why no, don't they no. start with death and say a whole bunch of other things too? But don't worry about it. Death is the worst one. It's always liver damage yeah, yeah. Liver damage. yes yes yeah. mike yeah it's mike how many how many people here used to when you were a kid stuck your bobby pin into a socket well that's what we're talking about yeah i mean that's yeah. what that's why you have the little plugs <laughs> to put in there <laughs> i never my did cousin, that. my cousin used to do that all the time drive my aunt crazy the fuck so you're trying to burn down the house yeah. hey listen i was born at a time when they didn't they didn't child proof houses uh, in fact, I think they did yep. everything they could to make sure you got hurt. And I'm still alive. <laughs> I am still alive. Okay. And we played with matches. We all played with matches, right? Exactly. Exactly. Oh, matches were a lot of fun. And uh, firecrackers. Uh, don't forget yeah. them. You know. And uh, you know, my my par- my parents kind of wanted me to get life experiences. They felt that that was a way that I was going to learn something. You know, and uh, so yeah, they were good parents, too, is what I'm mm. saying. Hey, listen, that's interesting. We have new Skype somehow. I hope I don't come down with it. It sounds like like the like the flu that everybody's getting the new Skype. You might. And when, we, when you're off the air here, um, um, Rob, you might check online and see what people are saying about it. There may be things you can do that you, you can configure it in a different way. I know it's pretty uh, straightforward, but, really. Well, I hope I never get stuck with it. But, you know, hopefully, uh, hopefully it won't happen, and we won't have to change the way this show looks. Anyway, thank you, Mike. Thank you, Rob. Thank you, John. Good to hear from you. We should call us more often, Charlene. Great Absolutely. to hear from you, Jeff. Always terrific, and of course, Tony, our little boy out in Queens with his doggy. Um, you know, is, is the dog still is the dog still alive? Who's that? Is the dog still alive? She's sleeping right here. Oh, that's. Are you sure? Uh, she, are you sure she's? Are you sure she's not dead? 
<laughs> I call a job. Alex, she gets up a form. I, I don't want to even hear about it. You know, okay. just just walk her and make sure I don't have to step in her shit. Okay, <laughs> goodbye, everybody. Why don't you all wave goodbye? Because it's uh, time to say bye bye. There they are, the citizens panel, folks. And here I am, Alex Bennett, uh, saying goodbye to said citizens panel. Uh, they hopefully many of them will be back again tomorrow night, uh, and hope one of the people that's uh, that's there. Uh, will be you as well. Hold on a second. I'm going to hang up on them. There we go. I'm having to close all the stuff on Skype here. And uh, so it's ready for the next show that comes along. I'm Alex Bennett. It's been nice having you here this evening. Stay tuned now for the uh, intersection with Jack and Amy. That's up next. And then later on, uh, you will uh, have uh, connections at midnight Eastern Time, Eastern Standard Time. I'll be back again tomorrow night, same time, same station in life. In the meantime, if you see her, tell her I love her. Bye, everybody. <laughs>